children, a chronic disease like lupus, they want to see what is the quality of life of these children? What is the quality of life of these children as they perceive themselves or as the parent, parents perceive the well-being of their children? There are many quality of life scales and usual categories or domains as they are called are physical domains, social domains, emotional, school domains. These are some of the classic domains that we look at when we look at the quality of life, the health related quality of life in children. Um, there are other domains that we can look at, like the burden of disease, type of limitations, self-esteem, all of these different aspects that can greatly affect how their well-being, how the children perceive their well-being. The one thing that we can say based on studies is that the health-related quality of life of children with rheumatic diseases is much lower than normal population or the healthy children. And then when you look at healthy controls and lupus patients, children with lupus have a further decrease in quality of life. Children have to deal with passing through different developmental stages and any small changes in age can translate to very great clinical differences, psychological differences. They constantly have evolving and changing needs and expectations. There are cognitive differences as they pass, pass through developmental stages, issues with body image and recall. There's also problems that they deal with during adolescence, uh, things like peer pressure, the desire for acceptance and sameness, their relationship with their peers, teachers, as well as their parents. And uh, I think all of this really impacts their well-being. Something that we do see is we look and see how parents rate their quality of life and how children rate their quality of life. And we find a difference between the two because the parents are often very burdened, often um, very burdened and very worried and anxious about how what happens to their child in the future. And often their reports are influenced by their own guilt, by their own well-being and their perceptions of mental and physical health of their child and the vulnerability of the illness that their child deals with. Whereas a child deals with the illness a little bit differently. Now both parents who are adults and children, their well-being influences each other. So although, al although people sometimes just take the parents' views or take the child's view, it's best to take both their views together. This is a very sweeping statement, so I would like to like to be conservative and say that the parent reports don't completely accurately reflect their child's condition. I think they partially reflect their child's condition but not completely reflect their child's condition because it's influenced by how they feel and about how, how they deal with the burden of caregiving which I think is huge. A lot of times children don't quite understand the implications of the disease, depending on their age and depending on the developmental stage they are in. And all of this is influenced again by their interpretation abilities and communication skills. So, so we have to take all of that into account. We asked children and parents a question about how they felt about having lupus. And some very interesting things came out of that. Some children were very worried about their future and their lifespan. So, when you talk about lupus, I think there is a high level of anxiety. When we look at the domains of quality of life, there is a questionnaire that looks at pain and hurt, daily activities, worry, treatment and communication. The worry component is big among parents when they rate their children's quality of life and among children when they rate their own well-being. Unknown of the future, whether they will have kids, whether they will live long, whether they will be able to go do their careers, the teenagers who have an awareness of the disease, an awareness of the complications, are burdened with the worry. I did a qualitative study and asked children and parents how they felt about lupus, got the responses together, did very detailed qualitative analysis, and with those responses, and after looking at other quality of life scales, a thorough examination of the literature and discussion with multiple experts, put together a questionnaire called Smiley. That went through different stages. We followed um, 
the rules of how to develop a skill very thoroughly. And the final version of Smiley has about 26 questions and the responses are all in the form of five faces scales. They're all smiley faces. The children like to fill it out. They've actually told me that they like it because it actually asks them about how they feel. And it's easy to circle faces when you deal with cognitive impact of lupus and stuff like that. And it is, it, it is good for different developmental stages because the responses are very easy and it's very brief and easy to comprehend. I think when people perceive that they have poor well-being, poor self-esteem, poor self-efficacy, that can impact their um, their management of their own disease and that can impact adherence to the treatment plan. As we know, lupus entails a very um, a, a, a huge burden on the patient. It's associated with multiple medications which have long and short-term side effects, multiple immunosuppressive treatments which have very undesirable adverse effects um, like cancer, acne, osteo osteopenia, fracture, avascular necrosis, all kinds of, all kinds of terrible problems. A lot of times these uh, medications don't have immediate benefit that the children can perceive. They have to take it over a long term. Then they have to deal with frequent laboratory monitoring and frequent, frequent laboratory testing, multiple subspecialty visits, physician visits and hospital visits. And all of that can place a burden on how they manage their own illness. It can affect their compliance to treatment regimens. So if that affects their compliance to treatment regimens, it can affect the outcome.